Hello and welcome to another edition of Andy Shed Live. This is Series 8, Episode 21, for Sunday the 23rd of May, 2021. Hello there everybody, how are you on this fine Sunday afternoon? I hope you are all well, coming to you live, mad, bad and dangerous to know, as always in the world of YouTube and various other platforms if you know where to find us. Um, but yeah, here we are again, it's, uh, it's Sunday evening once again and we are back with a vengeance this week. Got quite a lot to pack into the show this week, um, but... Just to tell you, if you don't know already, you can find us in the YouTube chat as well. If you're if you're on YouTube, we've we've got the little chat thing up there on uh, on YouTube. You can see it somewhere there on the side of the screen. Um, it's there as well as on YouTube for if you're watching after the event. Because if you're watching this back later on a different platform, say on a smart TV or something, you can't see the chat. And I talk to people who are asking questions and stuff in the chat and people say, I'm watching it back on my Samsung smart telly and I can't see the question that you're answering because I can't see the chat. So that's why we put the chat on the screen there for most of the time. Um, if you are in the chat there this evening, hello to you. I see Jimmy's there, Christopher's there, uh, Wesley's there. I've just pressed the wrong button so it's gone off. Oh, Dominic's there as well. There's various other people that I know are watching, but until you actually say something in the chat, I can't give you a shout out. So I'll say something in the chat and I will happily, uh, happily give you a shout out. Um, Christopher says, have you got the emails that I sent? Yes, I have, Christopher. I've, uh, I've got some photos of yours um, to show tonight. And I've got a few other things. A few other things to do as well. In honour of Big Clive, I've got my drink again. But unfortunately, it's not Jägermeister. Um, because the old, th the old throat's taking a bit of a hammer in at the minute. I don't, I don't know what it is. I, I must be shouting at people a lot. Talking of shouting at people a lot, I was shouting at people in Kentucky Fried Chicken today. Um, do not go in the Kentucky Fried Chicken at uh, Queen's Road in Sheffield. They are idiots. Um, it's as simple as that. Yes, big trouble with them today. Ba basically, I place an order that I should have been able to pick up through the drive-thru. And they said to me, oh, you can't pick it up through the drive-thru. I've got to go into your shop. I said, I don't want to go into your COVID-infested shop. I want to pick it up in the drive-thru. Oh, but you can't pick it up in the drive-thru. Despite the fact KFC's app says you can pick it up in the drive-thru. So I said, give me money back then. I don't know how to give you your money back. I've not been trained on doing refunds through the app. So, basically... If you've got a rant or anything else you would like to say to us or uh, get in touch with us, then you can get in touch with us here. andyshed.callpress.net. That is our website. You can get in touch with us there. Um, there's a contact us form that you that you kind of fill in and stuff. Get in touch with us through that, through the through the old website there, and then I'll get back to you uh, with an with an email address where you can send photos and that if you want to send photos in. Um, but I don't. Uh, I don't uh, generally uh, give the email out on the air because otherwise I get tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of spam. Right, now, something's gone weird because, 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 because the chat's disappeared. Oh, there it is, it's back. It's <laughs> come back. Um, yeah, we're having issues with YouTube again. Talking of having issues with YouTube, anybody out there who is a YouTuber, like myself, who, who puts content up on YouTube, has probably had an email this week that they are updating their terms and conditions. Read it very, very, very carefully. One of the key things it says in it, um, is previously, if you were on YouTube um, and you didn't have a thousand subscribers, you couldn't put adverts in your videos, so you couldn't get paid for your videos. Yeah, you had to get a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours a year. 
that is still the case. You can't get paid for your videos if you've not got a thousand subscribers or a thousand watch hours. That's great because people with less than a thousand subscribers than that, there's no adverts on their videos. Well, there will be soon because the updated YouTube terms and conditions say that YouTube have the right to put adverts on your videos wherever they want even if you are not in the YouTube Partner Program, i.e. if you have got less than a thousand subscribers and less than four thousand watch hours. So they can stick adverts now wherever they want. Now previously I used to move the adverts because if I let YouTube put adverts in um, um, automatically they put in way 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 too many. Like every couple of minutes it was going for commercials. Um, which is why I say to people who watch this stream after the event, give it two or three days, we do this on a Sunday, give it till about Wednesday before you watch it, because when this goes up, YouTube automatically puts their adverts into it, and there's nothing I can do about it to stop it until all the streamers, what they call processed, for the different resolutions that it might be played back on YouTube. Um, and I can only alter the adverts after all that processing is done it kind of takes about 24 hours or so so give it a couple of days and I will take out most of the adverts I leave I leave just a few in um, but I will take most of them out if there are a ridiculous number of adverts in if there are like, adverts every five minutes basically I leave most of them out about every 20 minutes generally no more than one every 20 minutes or, or two in a block every 20 minutes if there's more than that if you're seeing ads about every five minutes Please, please, please get in touch with us, um, andyshed.callpress.net, and let me know. And I, and like KFC, I will give YouTube the kick in they richly deserve as well. Right, of course, if you want to help us break away from YouTube and you want to support the show and you like what we do here, um, you can you can become a patron. We already have a few patrons now, it's building nicely. Um, www.patreon.com forward slash Andy Shed is the place to go if you'd like to be a patron. And if you want to uh, support us in any other way rather than and don't want to be a patron, don't want to have to do the monthly thing, send us a super chat message on, on YouTube now. You know, you can pledge a, a little amount of money. If you've got the chat window up there, there's a little kind of dollar sign at the bottom right hand corner ish of your of your chat window where, where you type your message in. Um, click that and you can send me a super chat. Don't ask me how you do it though, because I've never sent one myself. Don't, don't, don't chat to myself, do I? So, yeah. right, we'll get on with it in a minute. So, who's with us? Oh, Fungi Phipps is with us as well. Um, I'm glad you're here, Fungi, because I've got your photos and that. That I'm going to show to everyone in a moment. Um, so, yeah, we've got quite a few photos and that in. Uh, in this week from uh, from people um, the first ones that I want to show have been building up over a couple of weeks actually from uh, from Christopher 2000 who is a regular in our chat room he's uh, out there in good old Australia don't even want to think about what time of the day or more likely night it is there when this goes out but I believe he's in the chat there with us tonight um, and uh, he sent us a few photos over the last few weeks, so I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to show you these that is uh, that is sent in. Um, this is one of Christopher's phones. He's got quite a few UK phones, and this is one of them. Um, this is he tells me it's an N1970B, an Ericsson phone, very similar to some that you might get in the UK, but in some ways different as well because. If you look underneath it, it's got a very unusual base on it. Very, very unusual. Um, so I, I've not seen one quite like that before. That is, uh, that is a bit on the different side, shall we say? Um, right. The next thing is got is one of these. Now this, believe it or not, is an Australian phone. Um, this is a PGM 400 series in Australia. They are based on the 300 series telephones uh, in the UK. Um, and they are kind of what our 700 series might have been. They've kind of got 
A circuit inside them, similar to a 700 series in the UK, but using a 300 series case, but a 700 series handset, if you look. Um, these were rare in the UK. There, there were actually, there was actually a model 700 in the UK that was a kind of prototype and was very rare but that prototype is kind of what they went with in Australia and that is an example of one with a British uh, with a boom I can't even speak now with a British dial 12 on it you'll uh, you'll see there and Wendy Richard what's she got to do with it well Christopher says he was watching an old episode of are you being served the uh, the other day and uh, he noticed uh, this, this Ericsson N1900 on the uh, on the counter behind Wendy Richard there in Are You Being Served. And look at the strange uh, ivory pendant phone as well that she's got there. Um, I didn't know they came in ivory. I've seen them in grey, but I've not seen one in ivory before. So, uh, well well done for spotting that, Christopher. If you spotted any, uh, any old phones in TVs, in TV shows or films or anything, let us know. Give us, give us a shout out of where they, uh, where they are and stuff. And this is just part of Christopher's collection. Just some of the phones and little switchboard thing that he's got lined up there. And he, he's helpfully marked them to, for what, what they all are. Because I, I would get that wrong. If I had to tell you what all those were, I'd get that wrong. So thanks for marking them there for us, Christopher. And he's also got this. Now, this is interesting. Um, because Christopher tells me this is an Ericsson phone. I think we've got two or three photos of this. Yeah, there it is from the back. Oh, I've got one too far. I've got a couple of photos of it. But what's interesting about it, look at the curly cord, or rather the not curly cord. That's just a straight piece of cord. And Christopher asked me about this. He said, is it common from not to have a curly cord, from to have like a plastic wire on like that? Um, the simple answer to that one, Christopher, is no, it's not. Except for the ones that are made in India because the Indian ones that have somehow snuck into the UK have all kinds of different cords on them. You know, just a bit of wire, basically, between the phone and the handset some of the time. Um, so that that's an Indian thing. But to just have a bit of plastic cord like that is is not unusual. Is not usual, sorry. And it's probably not right. Um... Um, but I, but you sent me another photo of this phone that I've not got here, and on the other photo you sent, you told me it was an Ericsson phone, but it had got a Plessy dial label in the middle. So had you stuck that Plessy dial label in yourself, or was it from somewhere else? Uh, Fat Hobbit's joining us in the chat as well, as well there, Fat Hobbit. Dominic says that 162 is very nice. That 162 might not be a 162, Dominic. I'll come to it in a minute. And uh, Penfold 50 is in the chat as well. And he says there's a few old phones in the Professionals on ITV4. Didn't even know the Professionals was back on ITV4. I never used I never used to watch the Professionals. Just watched Dempsey and Matepiece. Used to quite like Dempsey and Matepiece. Right, and there is the phone on the wall. Right, now this is an interesting one on, on this wall bracket. Because Christopher reckons this is a GPO phone. I'm not so sure. I think this might, and I'm not totally sure, I think this might be a GEC Geekophone. Or Gecko phone, whatever you want to call it. A GECO phone, basically. Um, because they were very very common all over the world and they kind of had the bell set built into the base and that looks like it is all kind of the phone on top of the bell set it all bolted together and they did do a wall bracket as far as i know um a wall bracket was not done by the gpo to put one of those on the wall so i'm wondering if that is either a, what GEC would call it, an original Geeko phone. Uh, 
Is it Geekophone or Neophone? Hang on now. Is it a Geekophone or a Neophone? A Siemens Neophone. I may have got that wrong. Um, maybe it may be neo. It may be a Siemens Neophone. Dominic says the Geekophone have a more integrated body design, so perhaps it's not. Then, but basically, I don't think that bracket is anything to do with the GPO. So that bracket may have come off something else. Now Christopher says it's stamped GPO on the bell sets on the 162. That means nothing though, Christopher, because it the bell sets could have come off a production line that was making 162s um, and just been put in. The only thing that's different about some of these phones between, between like, let, let, let's use it an example that a lot of people know, the Ericsson N1900s and the 706s. Basically, all those phones come off pretty much the same production line. It's just whether, in the end, they stamp, they stamp N1900 or GPO 706 on the bottom of them. Um, and sometimes the components are pre-printed um, with GPO and end up in N1900 phones. Because basically, they just pinch them off, the, off, off a different bit of the production line. So... It's very difficult to know if something is definitely a GPO one or not. I mean, you certainly can't go on the bits inside because the bits inside will almost always be stamped GPO. Um, no matter what company made them, they'll almost always say GPO on capacitors and things inside them, but won't necessarily be phones as a complete unit that were ever supplied to the GPO. I hope that kind of makes sense I hope I've explained that so even though the bits are stamped GPO they may not ever be have been delivered to the GPO it's a bit like it's a bit like if you have a company that says I want goes to like the Ford Motor Company or something and says our global company wants half a million red vans and the Ford Motor Company goes, oh, all right, thank you very much for that big order for your global company. We'll, we'll make you half a million red vans. Um, and, and, uh, and, the, and Ford Motor Company sticks them on the production line, half a million red vans, and goes, all right, we'll give them chassis numbers with, uh, with uh, the big company's name on. So Joe Bloggs Widgets um, or, or JBW becomes the first three letters of the chassis number of these red vans for this for this company order. But then, but then the little plumber bloke comes along, and goes, "I want to buy a van," and he says, "Can I have a red one?" He says, "I only want one, just just a red van." And Ford goes, "Right, yeah, it's thirty grand for a red van." Um, have we got any red vans? Oh, we've got that production line making that half a million vans. For, for JBX widgets, right, we'll, we'll, we'll get one off there and just make an extra one and give that to this plumber bloke. And, and that's the kind of thing that happens with telephones as well. So you can never be quite sure where, uh, where they come from. Right, moving away from telephones, Christopher caught this. Because we know we've got some railway people on here as well. This is a Melbourne Red Rattler. Built in 1920, these things survived in service, believe it or not, until 1990. It's, a, it's amazing that these were, these were in regular day-to-day -day service until 1990. This one is now preserved and has, and has spent the last few years being restored and uh, has been having test runs on the, uh, on the main line um, from the local railway museum. As you can see, it's under the wires, the pantograph is up. And there's quite a few videos on, on YouTube. Our very own Christopher2000 has made his own video. If you want to go to his channel, I'll say Christopher2000 is the, is the channel name on YouTube. Uh, he's made his own video. Various other people have as well. So if you want to see more of the Red Rattlers, go and have a little look 
um, around YouTube. And there's the man himself looking, looking very proud at the side of the uh, at the side of the restored red rattler there. Excellent job. Excellent. So they are uh, they are Christopher's photos that he's uh, that he's uh, sent in to us. Um, remember if you want to send us photos uh, the way to do it is get in touch with us via the website andyshed.callpress.net and then i will get back to you send me a message saying oh i want to send you some photos because you can't through the contact form basically but if you if you just send me a quick message saying oh you want to send you some photos or i want to send you some video i will then uh, i will then get back to you with an email address where you can send them to and if you want to send us bits of video um, to use in the show, uh, feel free to do that as well. But rather than email it to us, because it's big, isn't it, video, it's probably best if you upload it as a private video or something to YouTube and then just send, send us the link. And, and just, say, just say when you send us the link, you know, we're happy for you to use this as part of the show. And we'll use bits of video as well. Um, so there. Cool! Right now, it's not just Christopher who's been uh, who's been sending us pictures and things um, recently. Hang on, I've got the wrong thing now. Um, Foggy Phipps, who's somewhere in the chat on here, has been sending us uh, sending us photos as well. Um, but before I get to that, I'll just have a little look back through the chat. Uh, what people have been uh, have been saying. Um, talking about uh, about uh, phones and that in TV shows. Dominic says, although it's incorrect for Ireland, I noticed that Father Ted has a couple of three hundred series phones. Ah, oh, go on, does he now? Uh, um, and Jimmy says the nurse in Heartbeat has a 706 with a metal dial uh, with just numbers on the bezel so that sounds like it's an early N1900 that she's got there then um, uh, Penfold 50 says nice German helmet and gas mask with non PC flag in the background of uh, of Chris's uh, stuff there yeah well yeah he's also got a big collection of uh, of uh, Second World War um, stuff, yeah. Um, like a, like all good collectors who collect things, he's got a lot of stuff. Yes, he's going. He's going for the record. He's going for an attic like mine, I think. Um, Dominic says it's good to see some pre preserved electric trains. Almost no preserved operational EMUs in the UK. No, it's very difficult, isn't it? I've always, I've always thought a preserved railway that's got wires would do quite well, because none of the preserved railways in the UK have got wires to run under, and I don't believe any of them have got third rail either. The, the exception to that was going to be at one time the Epping Ongar railway, because that was part of uh, London Underground at one point and did have third rail and they had some London Underground units that were that they were going to use but I believe the London Underground units that kind of got vandalized and eventually got scrapped and I think they took the third rail up I think um, uh, Christopher said oh the dial label on the N1002 he said I put the dial label in myself uh, and it says, and the wall phone is a 162. Hmm, well, if the wall phone's a 162, I don't think the bracket is. I think the bracket must have come off something else. But things get mixed up, so you never quite know. You can never know for sure. And there's, there's things that I've got that I don't, I don't know for sure if they were GPO or not. They're marked GPO, but I don't think they ever were GPO. Um, because of the same stuff gets switched on the production lines um, um, Dominic says regarding the railway he says what do you make of this whole uh, GBR renationalization news Andy 
my tuppence is that if previous similar management contracts like GTR are to go by, it's not great news. Let's put it this way. They're, they're, they're trying, for those that don't know, in the UK they are talking about trying to renationalise the railways. No matter who's run the railways in the UK in the last, let's say, let's say 70 years, let's say since World War II, no matter who has run the railways in the UK, they've been pretty bad at it. Um, whether whether that was a nationalised railway under under grouping, or whether it's been the privatised railway of recent years, we have this stupid thing in the UK of one company owns the trains, one company owns the track, and the train operator doesn't own the trains and doesn't own the track, and also probably doesn't own the stations. So you've got this you've got this stupid thing of nobody quite knows who owns what and everybody is trying to score points off everybody else and and everybody is charging everybody else astronomical sums for giving their bit of the system you know, so the train operators get charged to run the trains and then, oh and then they get charged for rolling stock by leasing companies and then the rolling stock breaks down which causes delays that the train operators have to pay for but they say it's not our fault because it's not our rolling stock that's broke down it's a leasing company and it goes round and round and round and round and round and they make they make millions and millions and millions of pounds just by blaming each other for stuff that hardly hardly happened um so uh yeah it's it's rubbish basically uh, railways are rubbish in the uk whatever they do to the railways in the uk they probably can't make it any worse um christopher says is c networking uh can I call to test my N1002? Um, it's supposedly working, but you'll we wouldn't be able to hear you on the on the thing on the on the program. So probably not terribly worthwhile doing at the moment because it because it is working. Generally, Christopher, it's working all the time. Um, so any any time you want to you want to try and ring it. And this goes for any 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 of them. I can't speak tonight. This goes for any of our other CNET users as well. Basically, any time you want to try and uh, try and ring it, um, feel free. Um, if go to the website www.cktsinfo and you'll find a full directory of uh, of other users of CNET on there as well and all interesting things and recorded messages and stuff that you can ring if you go to www.ckts.info um, Right, I was telling you a, a little bit earlier that Fungus also sent us some photos. We'll have a, uh, a look at Fungus photos in just a couple of seconds time. Right, we are back. You see, that's where the advert should go, if you're watching it after the event. Um, right, as I was saying before the break, um, Fungus sent us some photos. Now, if any of you were here last week, you'll know that he said he's bought this green 200 series phone. Gr yes, green. And he basically couldn't get the, uh, the cap off the handset. Um, the earpiece cap off. I think it was the earpiece end. Was it, was it the earpiece end, or, or was it the uh, was it the mouthpiece end? I think it was the earpiece end. Couldn't get couldn't get the cap off. Thought it had been glued on. Um, so so then he started to wonder if there was something a bit dodgy about this phone. So he sent me some photos, and he wants people's opinions on these photos. So feel free to shout up in the chat if you've got any uh, 
if you've got any uh, opinions on these uh, these photos that I'm about to show you. But wait until I've shown them you all and then I'll go through them again. Because the last one, I think, shows something a bit interesting. Um, right, so here it is. Here's the... Uh, Here's the cap that he couldn't get off. He, he said he thought this had been glued in. He thought this had been so badly made that it had been glued in. Now, the interesting part about this, to my mind, is this phone looks a bit too good. Uh, now, I think you paid a fair old bit of money for this. Uh, <laughs> um, so it should be good it certainly looks kind of the right shade of green um but is it maybe a little bit dark well it's always difficult to tell on photos because photos alter the color of things a little bit um but it's a, it's a nice looking phone it's nice and shiny obviously somebody's restored it um now these were made out of diacon um they were a very very early use of diacon which is which is basically a kind of acrylic plastic um the the black ones were made of bakelite so that's why everybody calls them bakelite phones the black ones were bakelite the white ones were something else urea is it, i want to say urea formaldehyde but i'm fairly sure that's not right but it is something like that and the white ones go funny with time. They go like kind of toffee ripple ice cream. They, you know, they get brown streaks in them with time. The white ones, the, the, the material they're made of degrades. They kind of get brown streaks like within the material. It's, it's very odd. Um, but the green ones and the red ones are supposedly made of diacon or something very similar to diacon. Very early use of it. Um, which is a good plastic and it keeps its colour nicely and it has a nice shine on it. The only problem with it is it is very, very, very brittle. It's almost like glass and it breaks. So to find something with no breaks in it is very unusual. So there's the first photo. Oops. Right. I've got to press the right button. And there it is again. There, there you see the... Uh, the switch hook the plunger for the switch hook and that and it again it's in absolutely perfect condition one thing i've noticed from this the dial doesn't seem to have returned properly um so i don't know if if there's something wrong with the dial on it but anyway not to worry let's carry on now here we are looking at the back of it and again it looks absolutely perfect but look very carefully top right on the edge of the uh, the handset uh, in the middle can you see a white spot i'll come back to that in a minute and also about this i've been trying to decide if the handset cord is actually green or not or is it an ivory, a dirty ivory one? Um, because in some of these photos, it looks like a dirty ivory cord. In some, it looks like a, a sort of faded green cord. And I can't decide. Because if it's an ivory cord, that's wrong. They should definitely be green. And this is the, is the handset. Um, and anybody who's got a 200 or 300 series phone one of these handsets will know there's a little oval in the middle of it that should either have a manufacturer's name if it was a private phone so it'll say something like lm ericsson in the middle of it or it will have a code if it was a gpo phone and it'll be like a fraction to be something over something if it was a, if it was a gpo phone but on this you can see the sort of oval where it should be but there's nothing there so has it been over buffed by somebody to have all that buffed out or has it been buffed out on purpose um, because they're trying to sell something as a GPO phone that isn't a GPO phone and that would give it away right so that's one thing I'm wondering about 
and look on the very left of that photo you will see um, the edge of the mouthpiece and you'll see the little hole I think it is that you kind of stick a pin in to unscrew the mouthpiece to, well I say unscrew very loosely you just kind of turn it part of, part of a turn and it comes off but you have to stick a pin in that little hole is the inside of that hole green or is the inside of that hole white come back to it in a minute there's the whole handset again you can see now that's the other way around now and you can see the hole in the uh, in the mouthpiece near the, near the spit cup there um, that you stick a pin in so you can so you can get the mouthpiece off okay it looks good doesn't it it looks nice and shiny and there's a, a general picture of the of the whole thing um, looks okay apart from, apart from the nail hasn't quite returned as far as it should have but looks looks in uh, really good condition no breaks no cracks or anything like that um, it doesn't really crack diacon it breaks if you get a crack in diacon it tends to go all the way across and a piece breaks off generally um, you know so you do get corners knocked off and it really is like glass if anybody's got anything made of diacon that's broken they'll know what i'm talking about and there's a depth to the shine on diacon as well it's like it's like a very highly polished show car you know you know when you go to like car shows and you, you see these you see these cars that have really really been polished there's a kind of depth to the shine diacon has that and abs doesn't when you get 700 series phones, you can you can like look at the you can like look at them and you can see the difference. Um, but that is quite shiny. But whether there's a depth to it or not, I wouldn't like to say from these photos. Um, but there it is, and they see that that the handset cord on there looks green on that shot, so that that probably is okay. There's the back of it again. I'm assuming, of course, it's got a new line cord there, a new black plastic line cord. That's that's no great issue. Now, this is inside the handset. And that all kind of looks okay. But this is also inside the handset so you kind of see now there's the cap and then the hands handset insert and those bolts you can see bolt into those two holes and those two holes have, have got a kind of threaded insert in the baker light and that's what gets the um, the power for the handset up to the insert there's no wires to the insert it's just what goes through those those bolt holes but what i'm finding interesting here you can see inside those bolt holes um is silver and you can see that there is a white mark and there is green between the white and the silver and and it's like those insert those insets are white and they've been painted over green do you see where i'm going with this so there's been some green paint involved somewhere and that And looking at that, it doesn't look like Diacon. So now, look at it again. We're going to go through these photos again. And tell me if you think there's a depth to the shine. Tell me if you think it's Diacon. Or if you think it's a black. Or more likely, I think in this case, an ivory phone that's been painted green. Not what only wants to hear, probably. Um, is there a depth of shine to that? I'm 
I'm just going to let you all you all make your minds up on that and look inside that little hole on the right on that and is it ivory on the inside of there and why has that oval been polished out Dominic says he thinks the shine looks right on the body. But Wesley says, why is the threaded insert green? I don't think it is, Wesley. I think the threaded insert is ivory. Or I think the threaded insert is, insert is metal. Um, because it has to be metal obviously to conduct the electric through to the through to the cap so I think that the metal bit is just the very inner part a very thin sort of metal tube with a thread on the inside and as part of the casting process all the rest of it is whatever the handset is made out of what I'm suggesting is that this is an ivory phone and you can see the bit of ivory that's been scraped off there and I'm suggesting that this is an ivory phone that's probably gone funny that's probably got this sort of toffee ripple effect because the ivory ones do degenerate and to make some money somebody has taken this phone that's got this degenerated ivory finish on it and painted it green and I'll even go further than that I'll even say this is an Indian phone or possibly not a GPO phone possibly an Ericsson one or something like that and they've deliberately buffed out that oval when I find it Which picture was it? That one. They've deliberately buffed out that oval so you can't see the markings on it and painted over it and basically where they've buffed it out you can just uh, just see the uh, just see the oval coming through the paint. It's like coming through as a mark in the paint. So I'm a reckoning this foam has been painted. Now if it was me I would be taking a little screwdriver or something to the inside of this somewhere. Maybe the inside of that handset cap. Inside of that. And I'd have a little scrape and see if that comes up a colour other than green. Because this stuff should be green all the way through. Um, Wesley says there is green in the bottom of those inserts are they not usually a blind hole I think they are a blind hole Wesley but I think the green has gone in because the whole thing has been spray painted green so I think everything was green and the threads have cleaned up because those bolts um, those bolts have obviously been in the threads and I'm suspicious that he couldn't get that he couldn't get this cap off and that's also what makes me suspicious that it's been painted and that maybe some of the paint was still somehow tacky um, because some paint can stay tacky for months and months and months on end particularly if you put two painted surfaces tightly together and maybe that's why you couldn't get that off so what I'm saying Fungi says it's it's solid green so he says he scraped most areas and it's solid green well, do us a favour, Fungi, and scrape inside there. Because that... The others 
I'm open on. But to me, that doesn't look right in there. That that looks painted. What what does everybody else think? What does everybody else think? If he says he's done the scrape, um, uh, obviously he's probably not found anything. Um, Uh, right, I'm just looking at what people are saying in the uh, in the chat about it. Um, oh, Fungi says the white is paper. Right. So the white is on the top. So in that in that picture there, you're saying the white is paper on the top of the green. And and the and the white and the whites come off. Right. Okay. I'll well, give you that then. But it just doesn't look like diacon. It's it it's really really strange. It it does not look like diacon to me. It could be. It could be. But the interesting question on this is why has that been buffed out? Why why has that been made smooth? Because it, I've, I've never seen a smooth one. They always have something in that little oval. Um, but I will I will bow to people who know more about this than me. Um, because I've only got black ones and the, the black ones there's always something printed in that oval uh, Wesley says there was a chap on eBay um, he says uh, perhaps 20 years ago who sold two and three hundred series phones which had been refinished in green and red uh, yeah yeah yeah, I've got a blue one. I've got a blue 300 series um, where exactly that happened. Somebody painted it. Um, um, so Fungi says he's done the scrape test. It's all green. He's scraped most areas. It is, it is solid green, he says. All right, okay. Wesley says the reflection in the bottom of the photo shows a less than perfect finish. Diacon is usually like glass. I agree, Wesley, it is. Yeah. Dominic says, what's the T triangle cast mark? Fungi says he's going to scrape right now. Um... Dominic says, oh, does it even say TV? Maybe the casting mark might provide a clue. Yeah, it does on, on one of them, doesn't it, Dominic? It does say TV or something. Let's have a... Let's go through. I saw that earlier. Um, which which photo is it on? Um, it's on one of them, and I'm just not sure which one at the minute. Um... That one. It does to me. That does say TV on the middle of that, but I don't. I don't know what it means. But yeah, I think you're right. It does say TV on it. Fat Hobbit says he thinks it's genuine. Can't help thinking only someone knowledgeable uh, would go to such trouble. Um, Jimmy says bits do look painted. Fungi says, it now has a nasty scrape mark inside the earpiece. Um, Wesley says, have you got an handset there, Andy, which will show the extent of the brass insert? Um, not easy to get at, but I can certainly get all the one for next week. Um, 
Come on, you said, Andy, do you think that the metal screw thread of earpiece has had a reaction with the plastic and not they've glued it together? I can't imagine it would have a reaction with the plastic. I can't imagine it would. But if it was a... <laughs> If it was a ivory one, anything's possible because it kind of goes weird and misshapen. And, and even some parts on the Bakelite ones, because not all parts on the Bakelite phone are Bakelite. The little, the little draw handle thing on the front is not Bakelite generally. And also the, the cradle, um, um, the plunger thing. Um, and the switch up cradle that is not Bakelite generally on the black ones and they go misshapen and weird and that um, and so they can go oddball and stick to stuff and things like that and I, and I would say probably probably the ivory ones do as well but if the but if the green and red ones are diacon and everybody says they are um, and you see genuine ones and they really do look like Diacon because like I say when you've seen Diacon you can tell something's Diacon it just looks different somehow um, Diacon doesn't really stick to anything it, it's fairly inert Diacon unless you've unless you've spelt, spilt some very specific chemicals on it um, but the chemicals that melt ABS for instance don't touch Diacon um, Fungi says I've had a few 300s and even 700s that have been evil to take apart um, yeah 700s I think the thread on 700s on the handset I think the thread I think they just get screwed up too tight and become very difficult to take apart and sometimes get dirt in the threads as well. I mean, it's basically taking apart a dirty thread. It's like taking apart a rusty nut and bolt. You know, it, it's more difficult. Um, but yeah, I have had some very tight 700 ear caps and that. Um, but I don't think it's the plastic kind of sticking to something. I think it's either that the, the, the thread is designed so you can tighten it. Um, you know, and and it's been over tightened. I think generally is the problem. Fung says I've now got the earpiece apart from the phone, but I can't see how it's going to free the green from the threaded part. Um, it won't. the th The thread will be cast in. the th The thread of the thread of that will be will be cast in when that when that when the whole thing is cast basically it's done in a mold and those threaded bits will be will probably be put into the mold first and then the whole thing cast around it cast around the threaded bits uh, the other option is that it's drilled and the threads are sunk in like an insert and the threads are glued in um, that's the other way of doing it um, but how, which of those two methods they used, I'm not really sure. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's an interesting one. Um, but if you've got any ideas on how to help Fungi, if you're watching this after the event, um, drop us a message and I will pass on uh, any messages that may help him. Um, as always, way to contact us is through the website, andyshed.coldpress.net and uh, we'll see if we can find out a bit more about why this was stuck together. And, and as people say, that just doesn't look like Diacon to me. But all the shots kind of do so I'm, I'm really not sure I'm, I'm really I'm really not sure but um 
I'm always suspicious of things that are um, that are in really good apparent condition like that because knowing how brittle diacon is when I see something that's not got any breaks on it not got any repairs on it I am immediately suspicious because over all these years and getting the, the amount of hammer that a telephone gets you know clonking the handset down and that I am always really really suspicious when I see when I see a perfect one like that you know even the black baker like ones that are a bit more sturdy you know you see a perfect one and you're suspicious because almost none of them are perfect uh, that are out there Wesley says those inserts are the connectors for the earpiece they connect electrically to the mouthpiece and via internal wires yeah yeah it's a sock that you, you you're you're dead right wesley um so those show it again those those two inserts there the threaded inserts are connected to wires that run down inside the uh the handset well it's either wires or it's some it's some kind of conductive thing it might be a bit of bit of metal bar or something that runs down inside or a bit of copper bar or something like that but the but they are solid handsets and not like 700 series ones where you thread a wire up them now fungi says the base has a chip out of it um uh that also is totally green right that's interesting. I'm kind. I'm kind of more happy that it's got a chip out of it because that's the sort of thing you'd expect to find on something diacon of that age. You know. You know. When, you know when you see people on the antiques roadshow and that, and they look at stuff and they go, "Well, that's a beautiful chest of drawers, but it's not showing any sign of its age, so it's probably a copy." And that that's the vibe I'm getting from this. It's it's too good, and I'm not seeing that depth of shine that I would expect to see off Diacon. Now it may be that it's just something to do with the pictures, because to be honest, the camera always lies. You can take the same picture and at the same time on two different cameras and send them to me, and the thing will look different colours. It will look a different shade of green or a different shade of red or whatever because it's been took on two cameras particularly with digital cameras that might have different white balances and stuff like that on the cameras um, so it's very difficult to tell from a picture but to me who's always suspicious about everything basically it, it doesn't it just doesn't look quite right it may be right but it just doesn't look it at first glance to me, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't like to say. I think that I think the jury is out. The big question is, does it work? We've not actually asked you that yet. Does it work? <laughs> it, and it says it's also got two cracks on the handset. Oh. Oh. Cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm more happy when you say it's got cracks because that and chips out of it because that's what you expect from something that age. So it probably is right. It it, it probably is right. Um, the TV is interesting though. It's stamped into it. Obviously, it doesn't mean television, but I wonder, wonder what it means. So all those codes mean something to somebody. You find it on all the phones. They all mean something. Um, but it takes somebody who is more of an expert than me to tell you what they all mean. Um, Fungi says, regarding the chip, there's no sign of any colour change. It's all green. Says, so like me, lol. <laughs> well, well, no colour change is good where there's a chip out. Um, because um, Diacon doesn't 
discolour at all. Um, so if you brake diacon, it's exactly the same colour on the inside of the brake as it is on the outside. You brake ABS, and where where you know the inside of the plastic where you've made the brake is the original colour of the ABS, and the outside may be totally different. Um, as anybody who's ever got a grey phone with a smash case uh, will tell you, they can they can be sort of brown on the outside and grey where you brake them. Um, Fungi said, dial wise, not worried. Yeah, I wouldn't be worried about that either. It's a dial 12, they're easy to fix. Um, it may just be that it's jammed. Um, it may it may be, maybe that the spring's broken in it. Um, so it's not as springy as it should be. Um, but it looks like it's a, it's a dial 12, which is perfectly all right on one of those. Um, it may have had a dial 10 on it originally, um, but dials get changed in the lifetime of these things. Um, have you got a date on it, Fungi? Do you know what? Do you know a date for it? Um, all right. I'm, I'm just I'm just waiting for the chat to catch up. Fungi says, "My question, other than being real." Got on fire away. The chat seems to have got stuck now. While while waiting for 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 the chat to catch up, we'll just uh, we'll just insert an advert where adverts should be. We'll be back in a few seconds. Welcome back. We're, we're here. We are still live on this Sunday evening in in uh, well, a not so sunny May here in the UK. Um, Fungi says his question, other than whether that phone is genuine or not, which we, we now think it probably is. I think um, it says is how do you get the gubbins out of the earpiece without the green stuff shattering? It shouldn't be stuck in the earpiece, I wouldn't have thought. So you've you've unscrewed the earpiece, haven't you? As far as I know, that should come off as a cap. Yeah? Then what you've got is you've got the the internal workings of the earpiece and two bolts through into the back of the back of the handset. So you take the bolts out and then the whole thing comes out. Now you've took those bolts out, so you must have taken the cap off. Have you? Have I missed something there? Dominic says, Is it true that the 2 and 300 colour phones are mostly from the 50s? I've only ever seen photos of one or two pre-war green phones and a handful of photos of pre-war ivory ones. Um, I think basically the, the answer to that is the coloured ones were very rare all the time. Um, I, I think you could get them back to the 30s that, um, but the coloured ones were extremely rare. Black ones are by far the most common. There's maybe thousands of black ones for every one that's any other colour. Then of the other colours, most are definitely ivory. Um, and sort of for every hundred ivory ones, there's maybe one green one or maybe one red one. Um, so black is by far the most common. Ivory is the second most common green and red are the rarest um, right right Fungi says those bolts uh, were not attached to the handset so they weren't in the holes 
um, they they were free spinning. Well, they shouldn't be. They, they those those bolts should screw into those two holes definitely. So if those bolts don't screw into those two holes, there's something oddball going on. But those bolts are now captive between the cap and the rest of it, aren't they? Well, that should not be stuck together, and I've never known that be stuck together. I don't know, don't know if anybody else has, because what you normally do is unscrew the cap, and of course the act of unscrewing it, if anything is stuck, um, you know, the bit in the middle doesn't go around because it's held to the handset by, the, by those two bolts. So you unscrew the cap, the cap comes off, you've then got the bit that's held in. Um, you take those two bolts out, that all comes off. Um, and then that's it, you've got it apart in three pieces then. So quite how it's ever held together. Um, from what you're saying seems bizarre how did you twist it did you unscrew it to get it off the i'm i'm really really confused about that now well as he says the earpiece is usually fitted first then diaphragm and the cap is screwed on last yeah, I'll give you that. Um, uh, removal is a reversal of fitting. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm happy to go along with that. Um, Fung is not said anything about the diaphragm. Has it got a di well, not know if it's got a diaphragm in there if it's all stuck together. Um, interesting. Uh, 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 yeah. It's very, very interesting, that is. I don't know what the answer to it is. Uh, Fungi says he thinks it was wedged in place. It's interesting. Uh, Christopher, yes, Christopher. Um, um, yeah, ring, ring, ring two ninety if you want to, Christopher. And uh, it should, it should be, it should be on now. Uh, whilst people are having a think about about the uh, about the conundrum of Fungi's phone. Um, give us a give us a ring now, Christopher. Um, on on two ninety, people will not be able to hear you, but I'll I'll uh, I'll relay what you say. Fungi said after forty five minutes of playing with this phone, it came free. So I'll send more pictures during the week, and I'll send you pics of my red one too. Yeah, take take your red one apart and have a look, have a look at the red one and see see how that goes together. Because chances are that is right, isn't it? You know, chances are you're not going to have the same fault on two. I wouldn't have thought um, unless you got them from the same place. Wesley says the receivers were also coloured green, red, or ivory originally, if I recall. The handsets certainly were. By receiver, you mean the whole handset or just the receiver part of the handset? Um, right. Yeah. We, well, we. Simply, it's it's got me. This has this this thing about this green phone. It, it, it it's completely got me. Um, um, so uh, yeah, it's very interesting. You know, I'm an idiot. I've just realised I've got a 200 phone here. Here, this will be Christopher. 
Hello, Christopher. No, you not you've not tested it yet. Is it is it, it is it working? It's certainly working at this end. I can I can hear you loud. In fact, I can hear better than I could hear you last time. Yeah. Uh, ah, well, it's def it's definitely uh, it's definitely all right now. It's it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh no! No, that 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 yeah. Um, that 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 phone will definitely be a British one. What what I'm not sure of is that it would have ever been a GPO one. Yeah, well, the website may not be complete. They may just not know all all the what. It it may it may well have it may well be. You see, people make these websites with lists on. Um, and um, Bob Freshwater is a good example. He's he's got he's got a brilliant website uh, with lots of information on, um, but the problem is he can only put on the information that he's got, and and he may not have got all the information, so he may put a list on um, from somebody that's got I don't know let's say some let's say somebody's got hundreds of seven oh sixes, and he and he may and he may put a list on about every possible variation. Um, from what that person's told him that's got hundreds of them but even though they've got hundreds there might be a variation they've not got so yeah so Yeah, that 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 then they're not always cheap, but the the thing the thing that I think the the thing that I can I can best teach people, and this 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 goes for you and goes for fun and goes for anybody else as well that's that's buying relatively expensive phones is just because you're buying one that's expensive and maybe looks nice and shiny and maybe come from an antique shop that sells expensive stuff doesn't necessarily doesn't necessarily no well this is it this is it you see uh, stuff there's there's no guarantee wherever you buy anything from there's there's no guarantee and and the way around it that I I suggest to people, and it's certainly what I li what I live by. I don't pay a lot of money for anything, and 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 I never I never ever do. I mean, there's these there's these candlesticks sat behind me. I don't know if you can still see your computer or not. There's there's these sat behind me. Um, you can easily pay two hundred pound for one. Um, I think I think one I think I think they cost me about thirty quid. Um, because they've been converted to lamps, but you can pay, you can pay, you can pay, pay three hundred pounds for one, or three hundred dollars for one, or whatever, and you, and you can still get it back and take take it apart and find out it's got no no speaker element in it or something.
So, so you. You're, you're saying they changed the bits over on the inside. Um, yeah, you, you, did, you did well to spot it. Look, 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 Chris. I'm going. I'm going to have to go because I've got. I've got to sort of carry on because, not un, unfortunately. Oh, you got it. You you didn't. Uh, it was it wasn't a, a a blind off eBay job. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it, I mean, it, it, it's all right. It is. It is what it is. Um. So yeah. You. But. Uh, but yeah, in general, you've got quite an interesting collection there from what from what we, from what we've shown before and that. But I'm going I'm going to have to disappear because everybody else is wondering what's going on because nobody else can hear what you're saying tonight. Um, but we'll, we'll 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 get it sorted out so people can ring in and can and can actually be heard. Um, so I I'll speak to you soon, Christopher. Okay, no, cheers now. Bye. Christopher 2000 there, all the way from Australia on uh, on scene. But basically, what he was what he was uh, he was saying about one of his films that he'd bought, um, paid a fair bit of money for it, and there was still stuff wrong with it. Um, my my answer to it is, don't pay top dollar for a phone Un unless you've been there and seen it, and and you've asked if you can take it apart and whoever's selling it said yeah yeah you know take all the covers off and that have a good look inside it and then if it's all right and that and it's a rare thing yeah fine pay a, pay a load of money for it but if it's something unseen particularly off ebay and that of course ebay sellers can be anybody basically can't they um or amazon amazon's quite bad as well for this um you know unless you've seen it don't pay a lot of money for it. That is that is my uh, my advice to you, and hopefully that's why we do this show and why we do all the videos and that, because there are some scammers out there. Then not everybody. There are some really good phone restorers and stuff out there as well. Um, but it's just telling people what to look for, and that. And even the BBC gets it wrong because if you watch the repair shop on BBC TV where they fix all the old stuff um, if you look at the camera shots that track across that barn you'll see dressing the set there is a fake 746 that was made yesterday with push buttons arranged in a dial so even they get it wrong and they're supposed to be professional set dressers um, Fungi says I'll send you some pics of the red one uh, next to the green one see how they differ uh, brilliant that sounds like a that sounds like a good plan to me uh, to me fungi um, but yeah um, we titled this uh, this episode of this show more phone restorations and we've not really got to it yet uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, Dominic says there was a tech moan video recently where he paid a fortune to import something from Japan only for it to break. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> Techmoan pays a fortune for a lot of things. Um, yeah. He, he's put one up this week about a, um, a, is it a PCM recorder. A thing that records digital audio onto videotapes. Very, very interesting. Um, because what he's not gone into is the videotape bit and, and some of the video machines that we use to do that and the bitrate of video machines. Um, I have asked Techmoan um, to do something about Umatic video machines, but he's not got back to me about it. So if you want to badger Tech Mode and say, Oi, do something about Umatic video machines, please. Because I'd quite like to see what he does with the Umatic video machine. I've now got three of them sat here waiting for repair. <laughs> One of which I'm dead, not dead to plug in yet, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, Fat Hobbit says, They ought to have you on the repair shop, Andy. Yes, they did, didn't they? Write to the BBC and tell them, no, write to Ricochet Productions, 
who I believe are based in Brighton, Ricochet, Ricochet Productions, who make the repair shop for the BBC, write to them and go, hey, look at this bloke on YouTube, you're having him in the repair shop. Yeah, nice, nice holiday on the south coast for a few months to film that, it'd be great. By the way, anybody who watches the repair shop, and enjoys the repair shop. Dom, who's on the repair shop, who does all the metal work, has now also got a YouTube uh, channel himself. He's really good. He puts up a video every week. You see some really interesting behind-the-scenes stuff on the repair shop. Plus, you see his workshop and and the stuff that he's got as well. If you're into into classic cars and old Land Rovers and things and old uh, old scooters, definitely worth a watch. Look for Dominic Chinia on YouTube and tell him I sent you. Um, and might get a backlink from him. Um, uh, right, who have we got? Oh, Peter uh, Peter Blackburn has joined us in the chat. He says, in the 1970s, I used to get old phone bits from the BT GPO engineers, and I used to have a 50-volt hand crank generator. Wish I still had it. Have you restored one? Um, no. I've got one inside the switchboard unit. Um, the, the, it's a 50 volt AC uh, generator, basically. I have got one inside the switchboard unit. I've never had to restore one because the one I've got works. <laughs> See, with his fingers crossed. Um, so, no, I've not actually restored one of those at the minute. Um, uh, Dominic says, back to, back to old phones in TV and that, he says, on Gogglebox, which is a Channel 4 show here in the UK, uh, one of the viewers has a cheap and nasty Chinese replica, Ivory 746 clone. <laughs> Uh, if only they realised they could get a much nicer genuine one for probably less money. Yeah, they probably could actually. Um, Christopher says he thinks it's weird how all these British phones keep popping up in Australia. It is strange, that. And it's also strange how other phones pop up from other parts of the world. Here, as well, in the UK. Um, lots of stuff comes from Europe. Now, I can see how stuff gets from Europe. I can see how stuff gets from France in particular. Because a lot of British antique dealers go with a big van over to France, load the van up and come back to the UK. Um, so you do get a lot of French phones um, in the UK, but you do get them from other places as well. There seem to be quite a lot of Russian ones on eBay and that, but with UK-based sellers. So I don't know quite what's going on there. Penfold50 says, used to use a Sony professional U-Matic recorder back in the late 80s, offshore for ROV video recording. Oh, the little robot thing that goes down to inspect the oil rigs and stuff like that. How cool is that? Yes, yeah, yeah, U-Matic would have been good for that because they're basically built like tanks so could probably handle being in fairly adverse conditions and the picture quality is very good on them as well um by the way talking of picture quality did anybody watch the eurovision song contest last night and i'm going off at a tangent here but if you if you watched the eurovision song contest last night and you've got any idea how those screens on that stage worked particularly the one they dropped in that you could see through please tell me because it's been bugging me all night they they basically got a big, very, very high definition, one piece screen across the whole of the stage. And as far as I can tell, it was not LEDs. Because with LEDs, when they zoom in, you can see the individual round LEDs. And this you couldn't. It was a super high definition screen. And then there was another screen that they flew in. And you could see an image on it, but you could also see through it. So it was a it was a kind of semi opaque screen, very very unusual. Now the, now the Eurovision has a has got form for using very um, cutting edge um, technology in its staging. There was one time when when LED screens were coming in, and by LED screens I don't mean LED TV. I mean 
the screens that have individual LEDs and like you see now round um, round the pitch at football matches that have individual red, green, blue LEDs and they all light up in sequence and make and make a picture. Well, those screens are a fairly new invention and probably about ten years ago one third of all of those screens that existed in the world were on the stage at the Eurovision. That's how cutting edge the technology was when they used it. Um, um, Penfold 50 says, only one hour tapes on those umatic machines uh, and they were huge. Yeah, they are. <laughs> they were and they are. Um, but but very, very good quality. The, tape, the tapes were short and massive because of the speed that, the, that it moves across the heads. The pneumatic tape moves at a, moves at very high speed compared to uh, VHS and Betamax and all the others. Um, but very very good quality of uh, of pneumatic. Basically, if you saw news reports in the 1970s, it was almost certainly off a pneumatic tape. Um, and American television shows from the 1970s. Um, tended to come here on pneumatic tape as well. If they, did, if they didn't come on film, they tended to come on pneumatic tape. Christopher says, Have you got any weird Ericsson phones? And I saw a GPO 746L phone on eBay. Um, yeah, I think I, I think I emailed you about the 746L, Christopher, didn't I? Um, yeah, uh, have I got any weird Ericsson phones? All the N1900 phones are a bit weird because they're all a bit different because they're, they're N1900 something 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 on the end and the something 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 on the end means there's some kind of difference inside them. Um, so they're all a bit weird in respect for the fact they all look the same. But what we were talking about earlier, I've been a complete idiot uh, because we were talking about, about fungus... 200 series weren't we? I've been an idiot because I forgot that sitting down on the ground against my feet was this. So we can have a look inside one. Now let's, uh, let's uh, find out what this is. This is a 232L dated either 1958 or 9. The, the little stamp thing with the date on is a bit smudged so I can't exactly tell but here's the hand here's the handset now you know I said there was a code that should be something over something well if I can get this onto the right camera um, in a minute let's bear with me a sec not always something over something sometimes on the later ones they kind of side by side and on this one it's side by side so can you see that and you see a date this is where it gets really difficult so I never quite know which way to turn it but you can see there that there's always something in that oval. Now in the case of this, the oval is depressed on this and then and then the numbers are raised. So I wonder if that oval is filled on fungus foam. If somebody's put filler in it. But there, there you can see the number there, I think, can't you? Right, so let's have a look move this glass before I knock it over. Let's have a look. Let me alter that again. Right. Let's have a little look in here now. 
see it should this should just unscrew like that so that's what should happen screw thread in there you see then you've got a what they call the diaphragm which you should slide off sideways and you'll feel magnetic force then you've got this with two screws in and then this metal bit here you see is held onto there now normally what happens with these this can go a bit a bit rusty or something so these are these are a bit tricky to get off but the two screws stop that from rotating that is solid on there you know and I'm probably with this little screwdriver that I've got here I'm probably not going to be able to unscrew these because I oh it will it will come actually it will come but normally you need to put a really big screwdriver in them so So they all screw. There's the thing you can see. There's another one. And there's the unit. You see the whole thing comes off. And now you can see in here there's a bit of verdigris on this. But if I scrape those clean. basically then they are nut shaped you know they're, they're hexagonal these inserts they should be hexagonal look at that so make of make of that what you will okay <laughs> now it doesn't now does it matter which way around this goes back on the answer is yes it does because there's a cut out there and there's a bit there on that and so that has to go into that cut out there so you get it back together the right way around so there you go there that goes in there that goes in there And then these just screw down. And it's as simple as that. Is there a TV casting mark, says Dominic. Good question, Dominic. I'll take it apart again and have a look. No, there's nothing at all inside there. It's blank as blank can be. Oh. Right. And you... If I can get this to focus. There. See, it's totally totally blank so I've got no idea really what's going on with it I just I just can't tell you uh, what's going on with that one of fung is from that but that's how it should come apart like that Wesley says, are there blind holes, Andy? I'm not sure, Wesley. I'll take it apart again, shall I, and have a look. <laughs> um, yeah, they don't, well, they don't go through, obviously, onto the, onto the back there. But, yeah, if I stick something down the hole...
yeah, I think they are that sort of go that deep, that deep into the uh, into the foam to where my thumbnail is. Um, but I don't think I think it goes through. To it's hard to tell. But I don't think they're like cap nuts that are set into there. I think they're just like ordinary nuts. I don't think they're cap nuts, although they might be. It's too deep to be able to tell, really. You know, I think they are cap nuts. You know, so I think I think that basically when I press that in there, I don't think I'm hitting Bakelite. I think I'm hitting metal in the bottom of there but I don't know for certain so we're still not a hundred percent certain hmm it's not really told as much has it that except that this handset 164 was made in 1941 apparently <coughs> which sounds about right right I'll put it back together so that just goes on there the two screws go in that make the electrical contacts and as I've said before I will say this last week no need to ridiculously tighten things up you know just make them finger time no need to go absolutely ridiculous about it you only run the risk of damaging things and making them more difficult to take apart next time and then the diaphragm d never drop the diaphragm on it's very important this doesn't get damaged and doesn't get bent particularly as well so the way to put the diaphragm on is to put it on at the edge like that and slide it into position making sure there's no dirt trapped underneath it and it does say remove and replace diaphragm only by gently sliding sideways so that's back on there now you can see a very fine screw thread in there and a very fine screw thread on there so that will just back together and it is quite easy to get this cross threaded so I'm wondering if part of fungus problem could be that that's been cross threaded but what I don't understand is how he's managed to get the cap off with the with the insert still in the cap because the insert should be held very very firmly with those two bolts through those two machine screws and to be technical about it so I don't get that how he's managed to get that apart in the way that he has so it's interesting Jimmy says he's got to go he says have a great week everyone yeah you have a great week too Jimmy We'll get to the, we'll get to the bottom of this one of these days, won't we? So so that's what that's what it it should be like inside there. So yeah, it's interesting. It's very interesting. I don't know uh, I don't know quite what the answer is. So I will put that back at one for restoration. that came in a while ago right. stick that back down there where it was I totally forgot that was there otherwise I would have looked at that sooner <laughs> totally totally forgot that that was down there right back in a tick
And we're back. If you just joined us, you're watching Andy Shed live on this Sunday, the 23rd of May, 2021. We've been trying to sort out old Bakelite era telephones today and trying to figure out what is real and what isn't real and what's been messed with and what's fake and what's not fake. And uh, I think I think the upshot of the green phone that we've been on about is that we, we think it's probably genuine. Um, it does seem to have been messed about with on the handset um, because something has been rubbed off or something somewhere on that handset so there's something not quite right there but with I think consensus of opinion is probably that it is genuinely a green one um, but what's happened to it other than that I really wouldn't like to say um, Christopher says, my Ericsson N1002 handset has ETL stamped in the middle. Um, yeah, uh, because that's not a GPO phone, it would normally have Ericsson written across the middle of it. And ETL, I'm, I'm guessing, is probably an abbreviation just for Ericsson Telephones Limited or something like that. Um, Where did he say? Did I miss anything? I got distracted with next door's cat attacking a bird's nest. Um, um, what, and Dominic says, you didn't miss anything worse than just that fungus cat might be cross-threaded. Um, and Wesley says that he can't figure out how it can be separated from the handset but still have the earpiece fitted to it. No, I can't figure that out, Wesley. You've, you've, you've hit the nail on the head there. I've got no idea how that's happened. Um, I've got no idea how it would go together like that because those bolts would push through and you'd not be able to get the diaphragm flat on as well. Um, so I've got no idea what's, uh, what's happening there. Um... Uh, Wade says Penfold was correct last week with what I just said about ETL. Um, yeah, yeah, Penfold did mention it last week, didn't he? Um, ETL probably stands for Ericsson Telephones Limited. That's that. That's the best guess. And if you've got it on a, on an Ericsson phone, there, Christopher, I would say that is that is probably a very good guess. I've not personally seen that on one. Um, the ones that I've seen all tend to say L M Ericsson on them. But bear in mind, you're in a different country to what I am, and Ericsson produce things in Britain, and they produce things in Sweden, Sweden isn't it? Sweden, Sweden that Ericsson come from. They produce things there as well, and they possibly produce things in other parts of the world, or, or maybe things are produced under licence in other parts of the world. Um, so it's probably slightly different what they put on them in, in different countries. Christopher says we should do a test one day to see if three-way calls are possible on CNET. Let's see if we can get a two-way call to actually work on the show first, Christopher. <laughs> Let's try to walk before we try to run. Um, but yeah, I, I will I will try and get it. Um, I mean, we did get... By, by using bits of string and old cotton reels, we did manage to get people on air a few weeks ago but it was very very difficult and the sound wasn't very good i'm hoping to find a better solution to do that um, so that anybody who has got a cnet telephone and for those of you who don't know what cnet is i can best point you towards their website ckts.info to find out but basically it's a voip telephone system whereby you have a little box plugged in like this one here, if only you could see it. Oh, I've got a spare one here that I can show you. Now, one of these plugged into your router or whatever you get your internet from, and then you can plug an old telephone into it as well. And basically, it connects up to like an alternate telephone system that still uses old fashioned numbers and things all around the world. And you can talk to people all around the world on it. As I say, if you want more information on it, go to ckts.info 
and you'll find out all about CNET, the old, uh, the old telephone system on there. Alright, are we getting there? Blimey, I feel like Noel Edmonds on a Saturday morning circa 1978. I feel like I've been broadcasting for about three and a half hours. Is grandstand going to start so I can have a break? Um, alright, um, ask him more. <laughs> uh, uh, right, what's people saying in the chat? Uh, Christopher says, I know uh, N1900s were used on Australia Railways. Yeah, N1900s used all over the place, Christopher. Um, interesting interesting question about those. Were they tropicalised ones in Australia to stop the big spiders and things from taking up residence inside them? Did they have little nets and things over up, you know, sort of pasted over all the vents in the, in the base and things? Sorry about that, the stream dropped out there for uh, a moment, but we are back now. Um, I'm just looking at what people are saying in the chat while we were down there. It was a brief moment to you, it was a lifetime to me. Um, right, um, 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 Dominic says, I wonder if the Midland Railway Centre at Butterley would make good Escape the Shed episodes. Basically, probably not, <laughs> as far as I know. Last time, last time I heard, they were, they were still shut because of Covid. Um, um, but it's quite a slow railway, that one. Go, go on that train, and it doesn't go very far, but it does take a lot of time. Um, uh, Wesley says, you need a trim phone, Andy, if it's swap shop. I do, Wesley. I, 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 I do, I, I have got some. Um, um, it says, any potato updates, Andy? Not at the minute, I've got to earth up now, Wesley. They are now big enough to be earthed up, the potatoes, so watch out for another garden video coming out fairly soon. Uh, Christopher says, did the stream stop? Yeah, it did, uh, but it's back now, I hope. Uh, Penfold50 says, where is Posh Paws? This is relating to the old television show swap shop to hell with posh paws where is maggie yeah yeah I had a thing about maggie back in the day um uh uh wesley says will i have to wait until next week to find out how the potatoes are you, you might wesley you might yeah um Christopher says, I use the Grandstream ATA for pull-style telephones to use CNET. Yeah, you have to use a Grandstream one, uh, Christopher. To, to, to couple a pull-style phone directly to CNET, um, if you're not going through a PABX that can do the pulse-to-tone conversion for you, um, to connect to pulse-dial anything directly to CNET, the only ATA that will do it, that little silver box that I showed you, is a Grandstream one. Basically any of the Grandstream ones I think pretty much will do it. But other types of ATA may be cheaper, but they won't directly to, they won't do the pulse of tone conversion to connect a dial phone up to it. So you have to have something else to do the pulse to tone conversion. Um Wesley says, so did Keith. Yes, Keith had a thing about Maggie, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if any of you don't know what we're talking about here, it's a multicolored swap shop. Google it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised you lot have watched swap shop. I, I thought some of you lot would have been Tiswas people. So, um, Have you grown any carrots? Says Dominic. Interesting you should say that, Dominic. Interesting you should ask that question, Dominic. I was given this has got absolutely nothing to do with telephones at all. Um, I was given this a while back. Right. For those of you that don't speak funny, it's a funky veg kit. Right. And there's all sorts of weird 
weird things in it. Like, 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 I've got a little booklet here with, with them all in. There's purple carrots, yellow courgettes, stripy tomatoes, red Brussels sprouts, and multicoloured bright Swiss chard. Can you see that? Those tomatoes only look red on that picture, don't they? But I, I swear they are stripy. They're red and yellow striped. But particularly the carrots. Aren't the carrots cool? <laughs> People think they're really weird radishes, won't they? So yeah, I've got, I've got to set on the app. Where we are here in the frozen north of the UK, um, it's only just sort of getting time to set carrots. And particularly this year, it's really, really cold outside. A friend of mine from Spain, I went to meet, meet up with a friend of mine from Spain today, uh, Mariam, who uh, who's in Sheffield, and we, we had a walk sort of around the local park, and, and like, being from Spain, she used to be hot, so she was like wearing like three woolly jumpers and two overcoats and, and that, and it's nearly June as well, and so it's just really, really cold. But that's the UK for you. Those of you watching this in other countries, this means you, Christopher, you'll never know how lucky you are not to be in the UK weather-wise. Um, right, I think it's almost a wrap for today. Christopher says, I have never seen multicoloured swap shop. You have something to do with multicolour swap shops downfall, Christopher. I'll explain it to you in a minute. Um, but my mum remembers watching the GPO 746 phone. Phone it. In the 1970s. My mum remembers watching the GPO 746 phone it in the 1970s phone in. She wanted to watch Swap Shop because it was only in British. Or was your mum in the UK in the 1970s? If she was, she might have seen Swap Shop. But uh, uh, um, Wesley says, I went for a walk on the beach yesterday. It was bracing. I bet it was. Um, yeah, Swap Shop. Yeah, yeah Christopher, you had, you had a part in its downfall because most of the most of swap shop was wiped and it was wiped because it was recorded onto i don't know if it was one inch or two inch reel to reel videotape it was it was at a time when the bbc was swapping over from two inch quadruple x videotape for those of you who know about these things to one inch tape and pex one inch and Work cassettes, it was reel to reel. And the way you edited tape in those days, the way you edited videotape, was you actually physically cut it. And it was very difficult to edit because the picture head and the sound head are in different places. So when you make a cut in the tape, the sound kind of carries on a bit. <laughs> or the sound gets cut off first because where you cut in the tape, because as it go as the tape goes through the machine it's picking up sound from the bit of tape that's there and video from the bit of tape that's there if you cut there you might still have the video but no sound or you might still have the sound but no video so where you do the splice the sound and pictures don't match up for like a couple of seconds so there, there were ways around this by dubbing little bits of the tape but basically this manual cutting of the tape was very difficult and very expensive to do so the bbc at one point said any pre-recorded shows can have two cuts in the tape and no more. So they had to do the shows more or less as live in, in the 60s and into the 1970s. And when the BBC recorded Swap Shop, that was great because it was a live show and it just went straight on to like a three hour tape. It was on 9.30 in the morning till 12.30 or sometimes 12.15 depending on what time Grandstand wanted to start which was the show that followed it. Um, so these three hour spools of tape 
In fact, I think they were one. I think the spools of tape were actually one and a half hours, and they used two to record an episode of Swap Shop. I think they were one and a half hours. These spools of tape. They used, so they used two to record Swap Shop. But there were no. There was no editing involved. And Australian television, and I don't know what channel or what network it was, went to the BBC and said in the 80s or 90s and said have you got any of this tape that we can use because they kind of got old equipment and they were having trouble getting hold of this reel to reel tape I don't know if it, like I, said, I don't know if it was two inch or if they'd gone to one inch by then but the BBC said yeah we've got loads of it but it's got edits in it's got cuts and said oh we don't want it if it's got cuts in because you know it, it kind of makes the tape weaker it might break when we when we re-record onto it and all kinds of things and they went oh well actually we've got this show that we used to record called swap shop that used to go out live on a saturday morning and there's no edits in those tapes you can have those because they're just clean pieces of tape with no physical cuts and and tape marks in you know you know where they cut it and taped it together with like sticky tape and the Australian network went, brilliant, we'll have those, we'll get those at a cut price. So they gave them all the swap shop tapes to re-record over. Idiots at Television Centre. So there is very, very little of swap shop that survives because it's been recorded over somewhere in Australia by something in Australia. So, so basically, Christopher... If you if you're ever any near, way near a television studio, and have a look in the skips of the television studio and see if you can find any cans of videotape, because you might have got a lost swap shop or part of a last swap shop on there. Um, so, so yeah, it's always worth looking around the bins at television studios. You never know what you're going to find. There's quite a few episodes of Dad's Army that have been recovered that way, but that's another story. Right, that is almost a wrap for today. Uh, Christopher says, My mum was in the UK in the 1970s and remembers watching Multicoloured Swap Shop and remembers a red GPO 746 phone uh, at home in the 1970s. He says, but I've never seen Multicolor Swap Shop. There are clips of it on YouTube, Christopher. Just type Multicolor Swap Shop into YouTube. You'll, you will find some clips of it. Just not a lot of it. Um, Germanic says, on the flip side, the many lost Doctor Who episodes have short clips saved by Australian censors. Cutting out film excerpts and keeping them. <laughs> so they, they chopped out. I was going to say they chopped out the naughty bits, but I'm having trouble to think of where there would be a naughty bit in Doctor Who. <laughs> um, uh, and, and, and kept it. How brilliant is that? Right, before we go, one more phone-related thing to tell you. This arrived this week. There's nothing, there's nothing terribly special about it, other than... It's not a GPO phone. Tell 1K ATS, which means basically I think it's a GEC phone if I've understood it right. Um, it is the table version. Um, hang on. It is the tabletop version of. This one that we had on the other week. Right, I'll show you this one now. Hang on. Here we are. That one is a tabletop version of this one that we had on the other week. Because this one has got a similar Tel 1K ATS on the bottom. Can you, oh, I don't know if I can get it where you can see it. Can you, can you just pick it up? Things have all fallen apart. Um... Yeah, tell 1K ATS on the bottom of that one as well, you see. Now, it should, for it to be an upside-down phone, it should be not 1K ATS. It should be 1K, probably 
W, if I eat wall. So we think this has been converted from one of those at some point in history. So we think it started out that way up. Uh, and now it's that way up. Um, but I put a GPO dial label in this and I, I shouldn't really have, should I? Because the other one, let me put this back before I get all completely tangled up. Um, the other one that I've just got, the wall mounted one. <gasps> just a sec. One moment, please, as Big Clive would say. The other one, the tabletop mounted one, has got what I believe is a genuine GEC dial label in the middle of it for the Reliance Telephone Company. A GEC subsidiary. So, I'm going to copy that and put one of those into the middle of the other one as well so this this one has arrived this week I don't think there's anything particularly weird about it other than the fact it is a bit of a mess it has also got a damaged a, a, a damaged curly cord somewhere yeah there look there can you see that bit of damage that blue wire split out the curly cord there so it needs a new curly cord this one because it's right in the middle I can't just chop a bit off the end it's right in the middle so we need to put a new uh, a new curly cord on it. So we'll be doing that at some point in the uh, in the near future, and giving it giving it a, a generally a good old polish and stuff as well. So that's all that's arrived this week. It's been quite a quiet week really for stuff arriving. You know, you know things have not turned. Oh, something else has arrived. I'll tell you quickly before we have to go. I'm getting the old wind up now. I'm getting that. Um, yeah, something else has arrived this week. You'll like this. Not a lot, but you'll like it. I'm doing all the 70s and 80s UK television references here. Where, where did that one come from? Not a lot. Something else that was on my Saturday. Um, yeah, I got these. Now... <coughs> I'm always going banging on about these bezels, about how the original bezels were clear and back painted. And I've managed to get a few and here you can see that. That one's from 1963. S63, which I believe means it was made by Siemens. Um, but you can see that it's kind of dull on the back and shiny on the front and that's because it's painted with kind of matte paint on the back and that's a that's a genuine one and then we've got a couple of genuine ivory ones that are the same there you'll see what was that one say on the back um, TV 64 Oh, that's interesting, because that's got a TV maker code. It says TV on it. Now, Fungus Phone had got TV printed into it, so I wonder if this was made by the same company that made Fungus Green Phone. Hmm. Don't, just don't know what TV is. Some people can remember all the manufacturer codes. I'm not one of those people, so if you know what TV is, let us know in the chat or something. Wesley Pegden says Paul Daniels. Yes, yes. The Paul Daniels Magic Show was the other show from the 1970s that I was that I was referencing there. You'll like it. Not a lot, but you will like it. Paul Daniels and the lovely Debbie McGee, who is still around. And the other thing that we've got in these is we've got these um, things that are a bit stuck over an, an ordinary 746, a later type dial bezel. But these are a genuine thing that was done for people who had got bad eyesight. Um, you know, partially blind. Uh, I've seen these before. We've got a couple of these that have arrived. And then, we've got some of these. 
Now, out of the GPO standard colours, what do you think they are? <laughs> well, that one's ivory. We'll gi I'll give you that. That one's ivory. But what are the GPO standard colours are they? Well, that one, if you look underneath where it's not faded, is topaz yellow. Actually, I know it looks a bit ivory, but when I show you at the side of the ivory one, you'll see the difference. Yeah, so that's topaz yellow underneath where they've not faded. Okay, so this one, you think, ah, that must be a grey one that's gone that's gone with the light. I say faded, but actually they go darker. Um, that's, that's sort of gone a different colour with the reaction with the light. You say, that's, that's a grey one that's gone a sort of browny colour. To turn it over it should be grey, right? Wrong! Still browny colour. So quite what's happened there, unless that has spent e an equal amount of time that way up in the sun and that way up in the sun, quite what's happened there I'm not really too sure. Uh, so, so yeah, your guess is as good as mine on that one. <clears throat> Lots of mysteries on this show tonight. And I've also got some of these that are the metal bits that hold those original bezels on. Um, yeah, been lots of, lots of mysteries on this show tonight. If you can help solve any of the mysteries that have been on this show, um, please do drop us a line. If you don't know the, uh, the uh, address uh, already, if you don't know the email, um, initially go to our website, andyshed.coldpress.net, and fill in the contact us form on there. And then, and then that sends me a secret email and then I can email you back and say this is the email address. Because as I always say, if I put the email address out on this show, I get tons and tons of spam. And I'm fed up of winning the Nigerian lottery, to be quite honest with you. Um, right, that does about wrap it up for this week. Just to tell you again that if you have enjoyed what we do here, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Um, you can go here to do it, www.patreon.com forward slash Andy Shed. And for just, for just the equivalent of about a pound a month, although it does it in US dollars, I think, but it is about a pound a month. So it varies with the with the conversion rate for the currency um basically you get your name on the end credits of the shows or, or most of the shows anyway and also you get access to special patreon stuff like like blog posts and things and there are going to be some special patreon first videos coming out as well fairly soon so watch out for those so if you fancy supporting us for just basically a quid a month um www.patreon.com forward slash andy shed and if you don't want to do it by patreon like i say if you want you can always send a super chat in the chat as well um right that about wraps it up today um thanks to everybody for watching wesley pegdon says those things are gray and topaz these things yeah, I think it is supposed to be grey, Wesley, but it sure doesn't look like grey here. It's a sort of dark mustardy colour. It's very strange. But I think it should be a grey one, but I think it's just discoloured on both sides somehow. Maybe they've got it hung up as a mobile or something. Uh, who knows? Like I say, it's been, it's been mysteries all the way along today. Um... Oh, and before I go, I've got to tell you as well that Christopher's got a new channel on his, on his YouTube. He's, he's not, his normal YouTube channel is Christopher2000, uh, where he's got all his train stuff and that. Uh, if you want to see more about the Red Rattlers, go and have a look there. He's got a very good video about those Red Rattler trains. Um, but he has got a new telephone channel where he's got his collection of telephones on it. Uh, it's Christopher2000 Telephone Channel. Just type that into YouTube and you should find him on there. Christopher 2000 Telephone Channel. All, all one word. And you, and you should be able to find him on there. And he's adding to that. He's just started that, but he's, he's adding to it sort of regularly, shall we say. Um, right, that is 
about it. That's as far as we go for today. It's almost time for me to turn back into a pumpkin for another week. So until next week, have a great time out there wherever you are, whatever you are doing. Stay safe, people. Stay out of those pubs. And don't mix too close in those supermarkets and stuff. Um, we don't get many viewers, so we don't want to lose any to any sort of coughs, sniffles and diseases or whatever. And we're hoping you can all join us fit and well again around about the same time, same place, 6 o'clock next Sunday evening for another Andy Shed Live. There may be stuff coming out in the week this week as well. There may be, there may be something late one night this week. So if, you, if, you, if you're a night owl, just, just watch out for those notifications. Make sure you've got those notifications switched on. Um, but for now, that is basically it. Um, and if you're a patron already, your name is about to come up. As I say, ta for now.